Okay, final, final session for today. Securities. So, um, when we create um, the, uh, the, the SPV, if we create that SPV as a REIT, we're constrained in terms of what we can do security-wise. We basically have to distribute all of our profits in a ratio of 90% um, to the investor base and 10% can be retained by um, within the REIT itself. And I'm not really too sure about the specifics of that. And I'm also aware that um, the uh, SOC IMI, uh, which is the Spanish REIT, may have very different stipulations um, to a standard ordinary REIT outside of Spain. And this was this Spanish read, the Saka Imi, was created, as I said in previous videos, to introduce uh, liquidity into the Spanish housing market after an absolute like car crash similar to Ireland around, around property. And Spanish property, incidentally, is still hovering around about 70-80% of uh, what it was back in 2007-2008, very similar to Ireland, in fact. Right then, um, so let me uh, draw up a few things. So we've got the usual view of our customers, customer number one, customer number N, and we've got our originator, which is Spanish Property Solutions. So um, I'll call it Prop Solutions. And we've also got our SPV. And we've then got our investor uh, community. Community. And let's skip all the investors here. Okay. So let's just say we have a REIT. And um, what the REIT will need to do is it will need to pay comp comp coupons. Probably, and um, usually REITs are, are quarterly instruments. So, uh, quarterly flows. You can also do them as, as monthly flows. I don't think they actually stipulate when you have to do the coupons other than quarterly or monthly. Um, so basically 90% of profits from the REIT uh, go to your investors and 10% are retained by the REIT And um, there is a, an entity that has rights. These are the, uh, the bare ownership rights that may be separated from the REIT. Um, but there is also a, a, a management agent or org. And, and that management agent or org, um, which could be you know, this may be funding factory. That also um, gets, can charge, and I believe it can charge uh, management fees. And so not only does the 10% uh, reside there, but um, the management agent can also charge fees uh, to the, uh, the SPV for administering this whole process and the, uh, the cash coming in this way, flowing out that way, and the uh, beneficial ownership stuff then coming in the opposite direction. And the uh, securities going out here. 
um, God, I've really drawn that badly, but you get the idea. So, um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was sometimes we're going to have um, customers who decide, you know what, I, uh, I really want to free up um, 100 grand, um, but I also want an income. Um, I want to uh, uh, put down a deposit for my, uh, my son's house and I also want to um, you know, not pauperise myself going forwards. I want an income of a couple of grand um, every quarter um, on top of my, my pension. So this person may um, opt for, um, they're going to get a 60% valuation on their uh, property. And 50% um, of that 60%, so 30% uh, they may want in cash. And as I said um, already, 10% might be chewed up by fees and various taxes and all that kind of jazz, and um, leaving 20%. And they may want that in some kind of financial instrument, like for instance, an annuity. And what we could do here is um, we could, and again, I don't know if it is something that can be done with a REIT, but certainly if this SPV is not a REIT, we can tranche the, 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 uh, the, the debt up here. And uh, we can have um, two levels of debt. We can have um, senior debt and junior debt. Um, and what that means is uh, when somebody comes along and they enter into this uh, a whole bunch of people come along and enter into these uh, equity release arrangements and they hand over their bare ownership title, get back um, the cash and then uh, slowly uh, but surely everyone uh, passes away, new people join and all that kind of stuff. Um, we could say and we also have an annuity product and guess what, the rate of return is, is actually really good and it compares very favourably and it's a lot better than um, the annuities that are out there. But it is a floating um, rate annuity and um, that floating rate annuity um, is, is paid before any of the other um, instruments within our cohort get paid. And um, so we, 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 we say that um, the yield uh, will be lower, um, but the the debt is um, the debt here is senior, um, so a uh, better chance of uh, um, getting paid, and um, so overall lower risk. Yeah, and um, for the person who's interested in in doing the annuity. Um, it has the, uh, the benefit of um, um, better rates of return, better rates than standard annuity. So, um, yeah, uh, lower yield, no, not great. Debt is senior, good, lower risk, good better rates than standard annuity bought from somewhere else. And um, so this subordinated debt here, the junior debt, um, the yield is higher, is um, higher than the senior debt. Um, the, but um, it only gets only paid after the senior debt. So this is probably what we're going to sell on to our investor community. And we still have, like we still have, um, um, really what we're, we're, we're still um, like giving them a pretty good yield and, and they still have a, an arrangement that is dependent on the robustness of the law. Uh, in other words, the uh, robustness of 
turning a bare uh, ownership title into full titles so they can execute a sale. So it's it's still um, it's still a pretty robust uh, instrument from that perspective because there's no counterparty risk as such, and they are obviously exposed to the market. But this we could sell on to um, our customers uh, from here who are looking for an annuity and we can give them a better rate than the high street and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of becomes a self-perpetuating system. Now I can't remember what else I wanted to talk about in relation to the types of security. I guess one of the things I was going to say is that um, we can enter into a, a, a bond um, an ordinary bond structure where we pay both coupons on principal on a particular uh, level of maturity and there what we do is as the, uh, the BOs, the beneficial ownerships, um, uh, convert into full ownerships and we execute sales and cash is coming in to the organisation as a result of that, uh, of the rights up here being exercised, yeah, the result of those rights being exercised and cash is pumping out. We can do a uh, 5, 10 and 15 year um, securities with a particular type of yield, with a particular coupon, with a particular um, and yield obviously being uh, connected to the coupon and the principal uh, repayment, your standard bond. We could also do what's called uh, principal only certificates where we just in 5, 10, 15 years pay out principal only, yeah? Um, so there's there's a multiplicity of things where we, we will be able to do, but um, if we put this SPV as a REIT, um, it, it kind of restricts us, but it has huge advantages in tax terms. So that's it. Um, that's the end of the this little series of videos, and I hope you found it instructive. Um, all of this will be placed in a different format very shortly. We'll be doing proper instructional videos, but this is just try and explain what we're really trying to do here. Okay, thank you.